Hello, hello, hello. It is me, it is me, your True Heel Phenom SP3, back once again with True Heels BTR Between the Ropes with the one, the only, strictly businesses own, one of the stars of NWA Power, Royce Isaacs. How you doing, my brother? Dude, I'm good, man. It's good to be uh, between the ropes because I haven't been between the ropes in weeks now. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> at least in spirit we are, right, bro? Exactly. We, you're between the ropes with me. You've had many great opponents. I don't think I stack up. I'm more like a squash match for you. <laughs> you know what? With how things are right now, I could use an easy win. That'd actually be really perfect. There you go. There you go. I'll put you over as long as you make me look like, you know, Alan Angels. Anyway, <laughs> uh, how did you uh, how did you like first find out about the whole pandemic and how's your life kind of been changing ever since you've been in like the quarantine and been isolated? Dude, um, it was kind of wild because I, I feel like it's such a sign of the times that things happened so fast. Like, things were progressing so quickly. It went from, obviously, like, in February, people knew that thing, that this was a thing happening overseas. And then it's, like, it started to creep over. And then you weren't really sure how for real it was. And then I feel like one day I was like, oh, this isn't that serious. I was literally, two days before everything was completely locked down in, in California, me and uh, Bateman from Ring of Honor were getting all-you-can-eat sushi. So, like, we're literally eating all-you-can-eat food that's prepared by hand. Like, <laughs> like, thinking about doing that right now, you'd be like, what's wrong with you? But at the time, I was just like, hell yeah, like, it's cheat day. I want to eat this food. <laughs> literally two days later, I was like, holy crap, like, I need to stockpile all this stuff and, like, get, like, you know figure out a plan B and all that like it's been wild but um I mean it feels like it's already been longer than like whatever a month and a half ish or so right now that we've been locked up but I mean you know I still I still get out walk around all that kind of stuff my toilet paper situation is good I got a bidet <laughs> so like I'm I'm chilling it's not it's not ideal you know what I mean like this sucks for sure but like I'm safe I'm okay you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm quarantined. I'm all right, bro. I, I think, I think when you, you got when the whole toilet paper outbreak started. I think the bidet was probably your, your greatest investment ever, right? <laughs> I mean, seriously, they're like fifty bucks on Amazon. Like I don't know if they still, if they, they might have gone less in stock now because of the, the outbreak. People might have come around to them, but I think they're still on there. Um, you know, baby wipes, all that kind of stuff. Like, you don't want to use the flushable wipe, baby wipes too much because they can clog your, your pipes and whatever. But, like, overall, it's like you got to find ways to, like, worst comes to worst. Before we're like, out in the streets, we will definitely be able to use a fucking cloth rag and wash it. Like, it's nasty, but, like, we will overcome. Like, it's okay. Civilization has not collapsed yet. We just got to uh, be smart and be safe and uh, get through this, you yeah. know? Absolutely. So to kind of bring it back to the start of like your whole wrestling career. So how did you get into wrestling? Were you like more of like a fan growing up or is it something that kind of like caught your eye because of like a situation or something like that? No, I definitely, I was a fan growing up. I watched it with my dad. I was like really, really into wrestling as a kid. And then after college, I was out working like normal nine to five jobs and I was doing all right at them. So I was, a good worker but i just wasn't like fulfilled and i always had this stupid idea in the back of my mind that i could be a wrestler i ended up seeing an indie show in denver colorado basically six years ago uh as of right now and i talked to the promoter afterwards and was just like where do i go to start training and he, he told me so i started training like literally right after that colorado uh you know especially at the time didn't have uh, an amazing scene. It's definitely a lot better now. So, like, within a couple months of me starting training, like, I was already doing shows, and, like, I just, I, obviously, I was training quite a bit when I first dove into it, but, like, also, like, I was doing, I was, I started traveling immediately. I started trying to wrestle as many people as I could. Like, it was, I, I feel like I had to kind of just make up for, like, lost time, because I didn't start training until I was 25, which, you know, uh -huh. some people 
getting at like 14 or whatever and stuff like that or you know right after high school or right after college and i kind of lost some of that time so it was like i just dove right right in how was your experience uh training in colorado with like the conditions and you know wrestling being something that's heavy cardio a lot with like your breathing and everything yeah i only i know my myself i know i have a friend that plays basketball out in denver and he says it's the worst place ever for him to play basketball so. <laughs> um yeah the elevation definitely messes with you the good thing is i had lived in denver basically since i was eight and then like other than like going to college in Iowa, I'd been in Denver my whole life pretty much. So I was used to it a little bit. And then I, I was a high school and college amateur wrestler. So I, I don't know. I think that gave me a really good perspective on how to push myself cardiovascularly and like how to like control your breathing rather than letting it control you, which was really useful for me because I also have asthma. So I have asthma. I'm in a high elevation place and. I, I don't know. I just learned how to kind of um, control my wind a little bit. And like you learn how to, there's certain spots where you can take a quick breath or how to rest while still like, you know, looking like you have it together and whatever, like while you're still moving and whatever. It's just it, college wrestling taught me a lot of how to push past mental limitations. And I, I think it, it helped. I just, I just always knew I had to stay on my conditioning because of my asthma. I always knew I couldn't, I couldn't, completely just like i could never let myself get out of shape i could never uh stop doing cardio all that stuff like i always had to push myself and also you know make sure i was working smart and everything like that um i i don't know man it's uh yeah i don't i don't know i'm going on a rant now <laughs> no, but well, it's good that you mentioned like your whole amateur wrestling background. What was like the the best thing like having that amateur wrestling background and getting into like the wrestling business? What was like sort of the things that you already knew going into professional wrestling? I mean, it definitely helped me with like obviously I do a very suplex heavy style and, and I do some I, I I can chain I can you know mat wrestle all this stuff which is helpful. Uh, you know, coordination and footwork and all that stuff has helped a lot. Honestly, though, I still think the biggest thing, like I just said, is just like it teaching me how to mentally be tough, both in the ring and the out of the ring. I needed that and I needed to learn how to like really push myself. So I think amateur wrestling honestly helped me more in terms of that in, in, with, the, with the mental game of wrestling and with the like mental, mental fortitude and, and cardio strength rather than necessarily like the techniques, because obviously pro wrestling and amateur wrestling are pretty different. Yeah, and then everything like with the training in Colorado, having asthma, being like the amateur wrestler, kind of transitioning into professional wrestling. Besides all of that, what would you say was like your biggest obstacle as far as like, I know this is like your training in wrestling, but as far as like making that crack in where you feel like you made your first big opportunity, what was the biggest obstacle that you had to overcome to get that? Um, you know, I mean, there was a few things. I think that, you know, like I, I, pro I probably could, like I grew up uh, fairly chubby. I lived as like a fat kid most of my life. Like I don't think I was necessarily the most confident immediately um, in my adult life. And like I always kind of have that side of me that I used to be a bigger dude. Um, obviously that also like any, anything that's like a kind of flippy thing or in the air, I definitely had to like learn how to do that and get comfortable with it because as a former fat kid, it's not something that I like immediately take to or like, you know, like, oh yeah, oh sweet, let me do a, like a flip or whatever, or like something, aerial. like, it's not something that, like, you know, like that I would have ever done as a kid. That's why I always went towards like yeah. the stupid stuff like that. But uh, I think it's something that I've, I've really improved at. Um, I think it's just something that you kind of have to like dive in. You kind of just, you know what I mean? Like if you if you love wrestling and you and you want to be a wrestler, you got to learn how to wrestle. And uh, I think I've gotten a lot better at that kind of stuff and shown that I can I can, I can kind of hang too. But like, you know, that's that's something that you always that you always struggle with. And you know, obviously, anything else like in terms of like body, you know, I've always like prided myself on my body in, in terms of in wrestling or whatever. But you're always gonna have that kind of like fat kid mentality somewhere inside. And there's a certain part of it that I think helps me out and like. Uh, um, I, I, you know, I do think it's a good part of my personality, but like, there's also times when you have to realize and 
we're in a very uh, competitive environment in wrestling. You have to have that confidence yourself. You have to be uh, ready to go. You know? Absolutely. 100% agree there. So, like, you kind of getting into wrestling. We talked about that and the transitioning, getting that first big opportunity. Now, like, how has your life and career really changed since, like, the big breakout that you've had in NWA and the rise of NWA power? Because it's really been one of, like, the best, like, wrestling shows that's been coming out in the last, like, uh, the past year. I think this, I think NWA power and AAW Dynamite are the two most talked about new wrestling shows out there. So what? how, how has your life and career change since the rise of this whole show man it's been really really cool man i i'm so happy with how everything's been going with the end of the way obviously it's tough now uh you know so many things got canceled and uh obviously we're not doing the empty uh, uh arena stuff you know we, we've been trying to put out content and still put put entertain fans in, in other ways you know releasing the crockett cup from last year and all this other stuff you know pop-up shows all this, you know whatever we can to, to keep their, uh, the content coming. But, you know, it is, uh, you know, it's, it, it's tough getting stopped up like that, but I'm like really, really happy with how much, uh, um, momentum we had before. Like, I really feel like we came on the scene and everyone was like, Oh, these are like a new, like they're doing something different and this is new. And like, there was a good energy to it. I love our locker room, uh, and, and the, the, the people we have there. I, I can't say enough good things about, um, my time with the NWA so far and it's just like I just want to get over this hump with uh Corona so we can get back to it and and get back to man like I, I really miss I miss wrestling and I miss my my brothers on the road and everything like that like I think that's one of the toughest parts you know what I mean like it's like obviously there's people that are in really really tough dire situations right now and my heart my heart goes out to them but also it's just like I miss my peoples man <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, to me, though, it shows a lot about, like, the guys over there, Billy Corgan, uh, Court Bauer, that they care enough about you guys to not put you guys at risk in running these empty arenas because it's a catch-22. You know, as a professional wrestling fan, I'm happy to have wrestling, but I don't feel like, you know, I don't feel 100% happy watching it all the time in this period knowing that the risk is out there so i definitely give it up to nwa court bauer and billy corgan for not making that that tough choice not to run these empty arena shows uh uh you're thinking of uh uh Lagana, not uh court no, Lagana. i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> Lagana. yeah well i, I caught it there um no i agree it, it's a, like you said i think the best way to summarize it is catch 22 because obviously i miss wrestling and i miss performing but like it's also a scare you know it's hard to put people at risk and scary time and you know is this like it's like it's there's it's it, there's points to both sides of it and no one's really like right you know per se and i don't know i see i see both sides of it but like i i'm glad that uh you know billy and dave are trying to find unique new ways to like at least get some kind of content out there and still entertain fans and still put stuff out there um you know and making sure that we stay safe so what more can you say you know 100 percent respect to, to billy to dave dave lagana excuse me <laughs> uh so watching you on nwa power it's cool like hearing like your whole perspective going into wrestling being an amateur wrestler trying to focus on the suplexes because to me watching you on nwa power the thing that stands out to to me the most is your character work like honestly i i feel like from the start of watching you win the crockett cup with tom Lattimore as far as the wild card to where we ended off on nwa power your facial expressions and your body languages in matches and promos are just honestly you've improved way from like when i first saw you to now like you kind of have that type of humor in being a heel and not taking yourself too seriously which i love and what would you say like like helped you the most in working on those elements of the game yeah i mean i i really enjoyed my character work on nwa it's been awesome to show more of that side of me um I, th I think also it's something that I really I pride myself on and I pride myself on my expressions and trying to get people to feel emotion and whatnot. But I also think it's one of the biggest areas I can still improve. Like I still see uh, times where I could, you know, make make bigger opportunities or figure out ways to find the camera better or, you know, cut a better promo or whatever it is like I um i pride myself on it and i think i do a good job and that i've been doing a better job as the t tapings have progressed but like honestly it's one of the things that like i need to 
I want to be like bulletproof. I want to be lights out on all my promos. I want to be bulletproof and lights out on all my character work. Like I think there's definitely there's something there, but there's there's a long ways to go. And I'm glad that the NWA has given me a platform to kind of do that. Uh, and I think that you know it's it's been coming across to the fans. I think they've been responding. Um, and I mean, you said you said that you've been enjoying it more as it, as it's progressed. Um, that's just something that I really I. Oh, you asked how, how to work on it as well or how, how you acquire skills at that kind of stuff. I think a yeah. lot of it just and just not being afraid to dive in. Like you have to have, you know, I remember um, when I first got on the road, me and my tag partner would just cut like random promos on either random opponents. Like it didn't matter if it was like, it could be like a random opponent at, you know, whatever, SummerSlam, you know, you're facing Brock Lesnar and you just have to cut a promo while we're on our, our drive to Amarillo or whatever it is. Um, or like it could even be like, why are you the best at you know putting toothbrush toothpaste on a toothbrush and you have to like come up with 45 seconds or like you know but like cut it like a promo and make it sound good uh and if you can do stuff like that and start to get comfortable i think you start to realize like how to get better with character stuff i think always i don't know i've always noticed that like facials and all that stuff like um like they do matter to me the stuff that sucks with me there's stuff that i notice so it's always just been something that i've really tried to like stick to if i think it's a big moment where someone can see my face i want to make it as big as possible so i don't know i think i think it's practice but also like you have to be honest with like where your weaknesses are and how you can improve and um i don't know, try new stuff you know if your character work isn't getting over try something different you know what i mean like you have to you have to evaluate yourself honestly that's a, good, that's a good perspective, a good way to think about it. So to you, uh, on NWA Power, I also actually like off and like on the independent scene or wherever, but on NWA Power, who would you say is the one performer that stands out to you the most? If you When you watch back NWA Power, who's the one guy that you're like, wow, I, I, lo- I love watching, watching it back, and then when you're watching it from the back as well? Uh, it would be hard to, uh, to pick one. Um, you I mean, can you can reel off a couple if you need. <laughs> I mean, quite obviously, like uh, Nick Aldis has been like the MVP for, for, since you know the start I and mean, of, of the whole you know bring the NWA back. Um, he's done amazing work and his promos and character stuff. And, uh, it, Nick Nick's been on a crazy tear. Um, I always enjoy. Uh, 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 Eli Drake's work, I, I, you know, I, he's someone that I've been opposite of, like wrestled against a few times. I've been, I've worked with him a few. Like, I think he's always money uh, in in ring and on the promos. And then I think if I'm gonna name a th- third one, then it's like, you know, you have someone like Eddie Kingston who, in a very different way, can cut a promo as you know on the on the the same level as pretty much anyone else in wrestling. I think he he he's got to be one of the top guys, top top promos in wrestling right now, hands down. And his in-ring work is like old school, all Japan kind of stuff. Like, really, really, it's really high-level stuff. Like, I, I don't know. I, it's those, those are three guys that if uh, they have a segment, I'm, I'm not missing it. You know, 100% agree with you on all three of those. Those are three of my favorites as well. Sure, and and obviously Nick is someone that I get to work with as far as strictly business. I really like uh, working with Eli Drake and uh, Eddie Kingston. And I hope I get to work with them uh, again. I think that, you know, that's, those are good feuds. Absolutely. And there's a lot of meat on that bone as well. So who would you say outside of the, the NWA power uh, spectrum or NWA, who would you say is like a performer out there that probably the people that are watching this video right now have not heard of or heard too much about? Like an underrated guy that, uh, that's, and that's not signed anywhere. That's not that's not signed anywhere. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that California is full of hidden gems like that. Like you have someone like uh, like an Eric Watts that can move like really well for a big man, but can also just be like a big tank of a man. Um, crazy, like good athleticism, good finisher, good presence. I think you have someone like uh, Andy Brown that's really uh, a top-notch performer and he's really underrated. He's done PWG a couple times, but uh, still, like he's, I still think he's underrated. Like I think he can go with anyone in the world in terms of just technical wrestling-wise. Uh, and then Ray Rosas would be another guy that I would 
uh, mentioned in that same category. <clears throat> Another championship wrestling from Hollywood, long time kind of lifer kind of guy, and uh, they can have a good match with you know Lightbulb. He's he's amazing. Uh, uh, what he can do in ring. So with all this quarantine, with being isolated, what ha- how have you been like taking advantage of the extra time? What have you been binge watching? What is the best show that you can suggest for our viewers or probably a wrestling or any wrestling that you've been watching? Um, you know, uh, binge watch like I've seen so many shows, the tops of it so far. I watched all of Mad Men, uh, which is seven seasons. I highly recommend it. John Hamm is the man. It's a good period piece. Really messed up. Um, I uh, I I just got into it, but I'm like, I'm really into it. And I only didn't watch it because it was already completed. I just didn't know like when to start. But The Wire, I'm like basically through season one. That show yes. is so good. I'm so <laughs> um, Ozark. I just finished Ozark. I've been like halfway through it for like forever, and I was like, oh, I should just finish this off. Um, Narcos is really good, but I finished that like before the quarantine. And Narcos Mexico is, is really good too. Uh, if you can't tell, I love the uh, the gritty drug uh, shows and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, I've been doing the quarantine workouts. I got some some home dumbbells and some exercise bands and like a pull up bar and stuff like that. So I'm really, really trying to make sure that I stay in shape. Like I don't want to put on any extra weight. So I'm gonna keep my carbs low, protein really high. Um, you know, making sure I, I eat enough and because obviously, you know, it's like even with working out twice a day, sometimes I'm not moving around as much as I would before, you know, and obviously, yeah. you know, wrestling, which is amazing cardio. So um, I've been really trying to stick to it and stay in good shape. So that way, whenever things do clear out, I can just hit the ground running. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to have to get restarted on everything. Like, I just want to be as soon as the quarantine's over and we can wrestle again, I want to be ready to go. And now I have to be like, all right, give me like 90 days to get in shape. Like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm like, <clears throat> when we can start performing, I want to perform again. And uh, I don't know. I just, my body feels good right now because I haven't bumped in a while. You know what I mean? So that's good. I, yeah. I had a little bit of a, of my, I had some elbow bursitis going into the quarantine. So I got to, like, I would have never taken the time off to actually heal up my elbow because I had it. I'd had the bursitis for like four months almost because I kept just like, it would get a little better. I'd ice it a little bit and then I'd hit it on something and it increased as well. And like, it took a lot longer than I even thought. Even once the quarantine started, I basically didn't hit upper body for like a month. I just was doing legs like every day, like a madman. And I do some core and some like neck and stuff like that, but like no upper body stuff for like basically a month. And then still after that, I really had to ease back into it. And I was still like a little bit sore and whatever. Now it feels good, but I don't know, man. Quarantine's been wild, but like overall, I just want to, you know, hopefully we can all come through this and be stronger on the other side of it because it's definitely been a lot of adversity for a lot of people. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of people going through a lot tougher than than we are, but I'm just glad that you're safe, that everyone probably watching this is safe as well. So, and I'm glad that you're taking advantage of the quarantine time to kind of like get yourself better and get your body right. That's a, definitely a positive out of this whole ordeal. Yeah, abs- absolutely, man. Um, you know what I mean? It's like we got to stay positive. We got to do positive stuff if we can. Um, I don't know, man. Whatever. Good, good TV, good workouts. You know, what? I have a roof over my head. That's the that's the number one thing that matters the most. That you're saved. You got a roof over your head because <laughs> there this is a, this is a trying time for most people. So, what would you say uh, as far as like what how how is wrestling gonna like be able to respond going further? How do you see wrestling changing long term after this post uh, pandemic and quarantine? Yeah, I mean the thing is once you know to put it out there, I am just a guy with an opinion. I'm no expert, so I. Don't know uh, if any of this will be true. Don't hold me to this. Um, but I mean, I, I imagine that a lot of other stuff is going to kind of open up sooner before wrestling, just because like whatever is more necessary and less dangerous. Like at the end of the day, um, wrestling is my life, and I love wrestling. But it's not like we need to have wrestling event. Like sports and um, entertainment are like optional things that we can do without if, if we're going to put people at high risk 
Whereas if you can open, <clears throat> if you can allow people to still sit down in a restaurant, but like there's like a cap on it or whatever, like that's nice, but also like it seems like a little less risk than like, you know, it's going to be a while before we're like selling out the Pepsi Center, 16,000 screaming fans. Like that just, that seems like a really high risk thing. So I, I don't know, but I would imagine um, it's going to take a second for like big scale wrestling to really open back up. I think, um, you know, with, 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 a, with big crowds, rather, I should say. Um, the one advantage we do have to what we were doing prior to what we had planned for Crockett Cup was in the um, uh, the studio setting, we don't need to have, you know, thousands of people. It's usually like a few hundred, which maybe we could get to that sooner than, say, like, you know, a big arena or whatever. But at the same time, you still have to be cognizant of these people are going to be sitting really close to each other and, like, when are we going to even be able to have 200 people in a room? You know what I mean? So, yeah, uh, I can't wait for wrestling to be back. I hope wrestling is back sooner than later, obviously. But I do think it's one of the, it's going to be one of those last things that's kind of like it, it'll take a second for it to come back because it's such a high risk. You're grappling other people really close. You're in an arena that's closed off with a bunch of people around you. Like it's just like you're exposed to so many people. It's such a higher risk than even just being you know, at a restaurant or wherever else. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, you're 100% right. It's kind of like this last luxury that we can expect out of this whole this whole ordeal. So my final question for you before I get all the plugs, where they can find you and everything. Yeah, I just, I, me personally, I just got into Ozark, so I'm not going to ask you too much about Ozark, but I just finished the first season of The Wire. Who is your favorite character? Uh man I really that's the thing is like everyone in, in their own way is kind of like your favorite character like you have a lot of I feel like you end up liking a lot of people on the wire there's something about how McNulty will never uh, like no matter what he always wants to be like super by the book and like do the right thing which I guess is something nice to aspire to but I feel like Omar is a badass because he's just like he is who he is and just like yeah, this is me. And like I don't yeah, like <coughs> Omar gives zero fucks. Like <laughs> what spoiler alert, whatever, the wire's been out for like ten years. But when exactly. he was like uh, when he was like, Oh, like, um, what did he say? Like he was like when I asked for the five thousand dollars, he was like, You're lucky we don't just kill you. He's like, I would have been like, Oh, you're being for real and I would have known the truce was on. But when he was like, Oh yeah, we'll meet you down here with that five thousand dollars, he's like, I knew he was actually gonna double double cross me. I was like, that's fucking that's cold as shit. I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> He's the man. Like, honestly, it was watching a countdown of the top 10 uh, biggest villains in TV history, and he was number two. That made me watch The Wire. So, yes, I'm, I'm glad you said Omar, because Omar is my favorite by far. <laughs> yeah, I Awesome. So where can they find you on all your social media? How can they support you with merchandise? Tell the people where they can find you at. Yeah, so at Royce Isaacs on Instagram, at Royce Isaacs on Twitter. Um, I have all my merch on all the, on there. I don't have pro wrestling tees, so DM me if you're interested in any, any merch. And you know, give me a follow, and I appreciate it if you watch this uh, in quarantine. And uh, hopefully you got some enjoyment out of it. And uh, I can't wait to be back in a wrestling ring performing for you. Absolutely. And follow and subscribe to the NWA YouTube channel where you can check out NWA Power. If you haven't seen all the first 20 episodes, check it out. Royce Isaac is one of the stars on there. Strictly Business, the wild card. He's standing out and he's breaking through. And I love seeing your rise on NWA Power, brother. Hey, thanks so much for having me on, bro. Nah, thank you so much for being here. And push if you enjoyed this video, push the like button. Uh, comment down below if you have any qu further questions for Royce Isaacs. Definitely follow him on all social media and support him. Support your favorite uh, independent wrestlers and pro wrestlers around the world during this uncertain times for sure. So push the subscribe button. Push the bell to stay notified for all the great content right here on True Hill Heat. This has been True Hills Between the Ropes with the great Royce Isaacs. It is me. It is me, your True Hill Phenom SP3, signing off until next time.